Welcome to Mixing Night. I'm your host, Ken Lewis, here with the lovable hellhound, Mazikeen Lewis. If you don't know me yet, I have, I promise, the weirdest resume in the entire music industry, and I'm going to be hanging out here in my studio for the next two hours live streaming. So look, settle in, grab yourself a drink. I got a glass of wine tonight. And uh, tonight's show is a real treat. It is 90 Second Pro Tips. I reached out to a bunch of my industry friends, and tonight, including, uh, we have Bob Horn, Jesse Ray Ernster, Busy Works Beats, Austin Hull, Scrizzly Adams, Dominic Ravinius, Kairos, Mark Jackson, Michael Moss, and Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery. Woo! Stay tuned. I will be sprinkling uh, pro tips throughout the broadcast. Uh, the show agenda will tell you what's happening, uh, when, and uh, for how long. Uh, I got so many pro tips from my friends, I have to like spill them over into the next show. Um, I think I have eight or nine that I just don't even have any time for tonight. Uh, tonight is just action-packed. Um, in current Ken Lewis news, my group, Obscene Steelers, dropped our latest single, 10 out of 10, on Friday. It's picking up a ton of steam at playlists. Uh, we're really excited for it, so check it out. Um, also, uh, the uh, current Taylor Swift radio single is Lavender Haze. Holy shit. Uh, incidentally, I engineered on Lavender Haze. Mixing Night co-founder Dom Ravinius played drums on Lavender Haze, and our resident Jedi assistant Jonathan Garcia worked on that record as well. Uh, we worked on three songs on Midnight's. Uh, Midnight's is already multi-platinum, which officially makes my 114th gold record. Um, I only count the golds. I don't count the platinums. Uh, anyway, uh, tonight's uh, sprint mix is going to be a group called Trailway Circus. The song is called Broken in a Million Ways, which I kind of feel like lately. Um, so, but Ken, why why sprint mixing, Ken? Why? Is it is it so you can mix fast? Is it so you can get your work done and, you know, get it? No, it's, it's not for any of those things. Sprint mixing uh, develops your instincts. It's uh, 10 minutes, faders down to the best rough mix that you can possibly deliver. Um, imagine sitting with your client next to you needing to cut a vocal uh, and waiting for you to get the mix together for their headphones. Or imagine you're front of house and you're, you're mixing and you got to get that mix up fast. Sprint mixing teaches you how to uh, just focus on your instincts, shed the technology, and uh, I'm going to put 10 minutes up on the clock. This is... Uh, Trailway Circus, broken in a million ways. You have found Mixing Night. Uh, masking up, still pandemic -y out there, but this is just tradition from... Uh, we started the broadcast uh, under lockdown, um, so the mask is still kind of tradition now. So, all right, you found Mixing Night. I got 10 minutes on the clock. Boom. Thanks for joining us. that I can actually hear the doubles in the mix, but they're not overpowering, so that's what I'm doing right now. No 
someone else is to blame You see, sometimes I'm muting it as I'm balancing it. I want to see what it what happens when I get rid of it. it. Do I miss it? Is it is it too loud? What's happening? That's what I'm doing when I'm muting and unmuting at volume. Oh, if you, uh, sorry, I had the button down. Um, uh, if you've been paying attention, uh, I just adjusted the synth and the lead vocal at the same time on two different controllers with different faders. That is a huge advantage over mouse mixing. Um, and it's just so much better feel. It feels much more natural. And uh, so if you don't have at least an A-channel controller or something, I, I recommend one. The pain, though your hands are black. Keep them. 
10 minutes, faders down to finished. Best rough mix I could do tonight. Uh, that That is sprint mixing for you. Welcome to Mixing Night, I'm Ken Lewis. We got the lovable hellhound Mazikeen Lewis demanding treats all night behind me. She is such a little cutie pie. I cannot even help it. This girl keeps me so healthy. She absolutely, I've never had a dog that absolutely demands that I walk her every single day or she is pissed and you don't want to piss that dog off. So I got to give a big shout out to the Cincinnati Bengals. I am a huge Cincinnati fan and who day, who day, uh, you know, the Chiefs beat them. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to the Chiefs. Good luck in the Super Bowl. But, man, thank you, Bengals, for such an awesome, awesome season. You guys, it was so much fun watching you. I'm really looking forward to next season. So, who day? Uh, pro tips tonight. We are going to pour right into this. Um, the first pro tip I have for you guys is comes from Bob Horn and then Jesse Ray Ernster. These are going to be sprinkled throughout the night. Uh, they are ridiculous. All right, guys, in the control room, roll it. Hey, is this thing on? What's up, you nerds? This is Jesse Ray Ernster in Los Angeles. I'm a mixer. I'm going to give you a little tech tip, a little mix tip, a little mix tip for Mixing Night Friday. Mixing Night? It's every goddamn night. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Okay, so this is a good one. Do you ever have that issue where you're mixing a little bit, you're dialing in the plug-in, you think you got it, 
and you realize the fucking thing's been in bypass. It's been in bypass the whole time. Yeah, me too. It sucks. So our brains play tricks on us when we see these fancy visuals. We see gain reduction meters. We see soothe working. It's magic. And it informs our decision making. And it, at least for me, I like to hide all those. I don't like to see them. So some plugins like FabFilter let you hide the analyzer. You can get rid of it. That's cool. It's, it's your prerogative. You don't even have to do that. But here's a way that I like to do it when you don't have that option. And that is to go like this. I'm turning the camera around. So we got like a plugin like a stabilizer. It's kind of cool. But when I'm dialing in the amount, I feel like it actually will change my decision making if I see that. So I've learned that if you go down to the keyboard and you hit option command escape, that will pull up your force quit applications window. And this is one of those like, like little windows that'll just freeze and hover over the top of the entire desktop. So it'll never move. So even though I'm gonna click back to Pro Tools now, I'm gonna switch windows and switch and I'm gonna adjust this plugin. As you can see, it's blocking the analyzer. It's still in the way. It's, it's like the best little secret. And uh, this is all a part of this kind of greater concept that I have that I like to call like eyes closed, ears open. And it's exactly what you think it is. You know, it's click the button you want to find and just get all meters out of the way and just be able to listen for it. Or even better yet, close your eyes and just listen like how is how is this affecting things how are things sitting into the mix uh, so that's that's a way that you can kind of kind of hide all the bullshit get it out of there we don't need it we need all the fancy displays all right hope you enjoy hope that is useful peace hello mixing night audio i am bob horn and in the next 90 seconds hopefully i'm gonna show you my parallel drum trick okay parallel drums here we go I have three aux returns all set to the same input and all of my drums, kick, snare, hat, toms, shakers, anything, they're all going to those three auxes. The first one is my pure aux, the second one my compressed aux, and the third one my dirty aux. So the pure one, obviously no plugins, no processing. The compressed one, I have the Arctic Acoustica compressor, very good sounding compressor, the UAD 1176LN and an L2 uh, Pro L2 just to catch the peaks. Then on the dirty, I have a SSL waves just really smashing, you know, slow attack, fast release. This is the ultimate pump going into an oven, which is really pushed, lots of graininess, distortion. EQ just to kind of clean up some of the frequencies after the extreme compression and distortion. And then a Pro L2 really smashing just to kind of glue it all together and make it extra smashy. So that allows me to balance these three and get a better vibe than just the plane. So here is the plane aux. Here's the compressed. And here's the dirty. So all three together, we get something a little more interesting than just the pure. Happy mixing. All right. Thank you, Jesse Ray Ernster and Bob Horn. You got it, man. Oh, we're so lucky to have so many amazing contributors. From the chat roll, uh, Jeremy Locke asks, Hey, Ken, what kind of wine are you drinking? Uh, Jeremy, I have no fucking idea. Whatever my wife poured tonight, she's trying some new shit, so whatever it is. Uh, typically, I like um, like dry reds, like a Cabernet or... Something big and dry, very little sugar, um, and uh, if it's white wine, low sugar wines like uh, Sauvignon Blanc, that kind of shit. Um, let me go to uh, my pre-submitted questions. Uh, Darius asks, hey Ken, how, how important is getting an analog to digital converter to incorporate into my system? I was looking at the Neve or the Burl, I'm running a Neve BMP in my, in my chain, uh, and I'm clipping my Apollo input but not my output uh if you have an apollo i don't think you need another analog digital converter unless you're like 
I mean, if, if you're mixing major label records only on an Apollo, maybe, but I've done plenty of that, honestly. And whenever I mix a record down in Ecuador, it's on the Apollo. So I think you're just fine. I don't think you need another clock. Uh, don't overthink it. Listen to the music, not the clocking. Uh, Max asks, hey, Ken, how do I correctly do multi-layer reverb? Uh, damn, um... I'm going to try and come back to that uh, later on in the broadcast. Uh, at the the second hour tonight, I'm doing a full production and mix breakdown of Bruce Sudano, Make the World Go Away, uh, and a uh, fantastic song. Um, so I'll try and answer that then. Uh, Alex, is com uh, Alex asks, hey, Ken, is compression really needed when mixing as a producer? Almost always, yes. I don't think I ever mix without compression. Um, yeah, at, at least some. I mean, if you've got a super ambient, spacious record, uh, I still think you need some compression. Uh, not only because compression helps you uh, shape the sound. I don't use a compressor only to reduce dynamic range. I use compression to shape the sound and the impact of my mix and... Um, and of individual things like that. Uh, so, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to give you guys a pro tip. So, I'm an artist now. <laughs> and uh, so me and Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss, are obscene stealers. Uh, here we are. This is us, the fucking goofy bastards. Um, that are, okay, so this is us. We're independent. This is all on our own. And, uh, so here is the song that we just released, 10 out of 10. This came out Friday, so it's been out five days on Spotify, and we have 7,200 spins. For an unknown independent artist, that is really fucking good. Um, and that is legit playlisting. That's not black hat shit. Um, that is, uh, I think it tells you, these are the playlists that we are currently on. Game Time, Anthems, Next Up. Uh, you can see, like, Game Time, look, this got 37,000 likes. This is a big list, and we are number one. Holy crap! And that probably means that we're performing really well on that list because we've been there five days, um, and we're still at number one. So, uh, this is why I'm telling you this. Losing Game. We put zero dollars behind Losing Game. Look, Losing Game has less than 1,000 spins. Is it because it's less of a song than Side Effects and Danger and 10 out of 10? No, Losing Game is a fucking monster. It's a great song. Uh, we put no promotion money into it, and that's what happens when you put nothing into your records. And it's not like we put nothing. I talked about it on the show. I played it on the show. I've, you know, I've, and still. So, if you're trying to make it independently, you must come to grips with the fact that you're going to have to spend a little bit of money to do so uh, in order to get a foothold. Um, you're probably going to have to spend a lot of money in order to get a foothold. And the most important thing about all of that is when, uh, when you do come out, you better be throwing fire or... Um, or uh, nobody's going to care. Like, I wouldn't be number one on that playlist if 10 out of 10 wasn't fire. So that's the start. Um, here is the other part of my pro tip that's taking more than 90 seconds. Um, you, as an artist, need to find your niche, latch onto your niche, and grow your niche. And that's really it. To the extent that... So I have the RIAA uh, gold records list up on my screen right now. And this is basically the most recent things that have been certified gold and platinum. Here's why I'm pulling it up. There's a whole bunch of names just on page one and two that I have literally never heard of, and they are gold or platinum. Alvaro Diaz, no idea. SG, no idea who this is. The Rare Occasions, never heard of them. Cigarettes After Sex, never heard of them. Uh, Tyler Hubbard, not sure I've ever heard of him. Um... Uh, you you get the, the idea. You go through this and there's so many artists that are gold who have built massive fan bases that you have never heard of. You can do that too. Maybe it won't be gold as an independent artist. Maybe it will. Depends. Um, here's another uh, shocker for you before I change gears. Um... 
we produced um, Des Rocks. We produced his first two EPs. Let Me Live, Let Me Die has 65 million streams. We dropped this completely independently. It's always been independent. Um, and we dropped that in, I think, 2019. So it's had four years to grow almost. And it will eventually go gold um, completely independently. So you you can do this too. Um, uh, Mazzy, oh, Mazzy Bear. She's, you know, she wants, she wants what she wants. Um, ben Kruger off the chat roll asks, Hey, Ken, what are some things you think about when leveling drums in the mix? Uh, I think about how I want the drums to uh, impact me. Do I want it to be a drum-driven mix? Do I want the drums really hitting me? Or are the drums a part of the landscape? Like, I think Hans Zimmer said, if you want a drum to be really, really loud, hit it very, very soft and turn it up. That's because basically the transient spike is what prevents you from having a really loud drum. Then you just have a really loud attack, but you start carving off that transient and all of a sudden your the body of your drum is louder. Um, so you just need to ask yourself how much of the body of your drums do you want to hear? How much of the impact? And just carve the vibe out. Uh, it's always about vibe. I listen to the song and I go, what do I want these drums to do? Let's go. Uh, Sam Champagne asks, hey, Ken, do you miss your analog mixing board? I do. I fucking, yes. I'm so 100%. Um, <laughs> it's just the way it is. Uh, I am going to go to the job board. Um, my friends over at Hey Audio Student Facebook group, John Crivet and, uh, and Sam Winter, uh, put together a jobs board over at Hey Audio Student. So if you are looking for work in the music industry, audio related jobs, pay attention. We got two minutes of heat coming at you. Hello, this is Sam Winter from the Hey Audio Student Facebook group. We like to post lots of job leads, career opportunities, and internships for people of all ages and levels. Here are some of the recent job leads posted on Hey Audio Student. SiriusXM is looking for an audio production assistant in New York. The Late Night Show with Stephen Colbert is hiring summer interns. Sweetwater Sound is hiring for their sales management team in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Blizzard is hiring a localization audio producer in Irvine, California. Apex Legends at Electronic Arts is hiring a sound designer. SiriusXM is hiring a music analyst. Disney is hiring an entertainment stage technician at Walt Disney World. Sure is hiring a pro audio marketing specialist in Chicago, Illinois. The Warner Bros are hiring a sports A1 in Texas. Caesars Entertainment Careers is hiring an audio engineer. SiriusXM is hiring a play-by-play -play board operator. Dolby Labs is hiring an audio research intern in San Francisco, California. The LA Film School is hiring a game audio instructor. Creative Music Group is hiring a studio intern. TikTok is hiring a machine learning intern. Sure is hiring a DSP intern in Niles, Illinois. TikTok is hiring a music production intern. And Activision is hiring an audio director for Call of Duty in Austin, Texas. Make sure to be active on the Hey Audio Student Facebook group to learn more about current job leads and internships. All right. Thank you, Sam Winter and John Crivet and Hey Audio Student Jobs. Uh, we're going to go straight to the next pro tips. Uh, my friend Busy Works Beats and Austin Hall got back-to-back -back killers for you. Uh, these are DAW tips, so um, I'm going to let the control room take it away. All right, guys, here's some FL Studio piano roll hacks. If your notes are short and you want to fill it out, hit Control L, it will auto fill the gaps. You can create simple rhythm by hitting Control U to auto chop, or if you want to have more control, hit Alt U, and then you can pull up this chopper tool and change the time multiplier. To strum chords, hit Alt S, that pulls up the strummerizer, and also try this button, Alternate Direction, for when you select multiple chords. If you want to make a quick melody, just highlight your chords, hit Alt A, and then change your time multiplier and your range to create a different arpeggio style. If you want to make your melody more realistic, hit Alt R. R, take off the pattern mode and then turn on your velocity knob here for levels. It creates a more realistic velocity. And if your velocity is too loud, you can hit Alt X to pull up the multiply function and you can pull everything down so it doesn't sound so loud. Hey, Austin here from Make Pop Music. I'm going to show you a quick 90 second trick to add a little bit more life and pizzazz into your drum arrangements and just add a little bit of extra vibe. So let's take a look at it. Here is what the song sounds like with a pretty standard trap drum arrangement. Nice, punchy, crispy drums but it's lacking a little bit. Here's what it sounds like. It 
it's definitely not bad, but I think that the song is so spacey, we could use a little bit more ambience. The one thing that I really like to do is start layering elements over that snare, and I'll alternate which snare hits they kind of fall on. So I'm taking this really delayed hit right here that I'm just kind of taking a natural trap snare and putting some reverb and some delay on it, and it sounds like this. And then you can layer it. And then one thing that I really like to do is just kind of do the same thing where I'll alternate these really roomy hits. So I've got this really kind of like reverbed out snare that I've got turned down 20 semitones. And I've got this kind of reverbed out snare that I have up five semitones. And then we've got this last little hit over here that again, I'm just kind of pitch correcting. When you get all of those, here's what that kind of auxiliary drum group sounds like. And it adds a lot of vibe. Here's what it sounds like now with all of those drums. In. She wanna she want the bag it's simple but it does make a massive difference all right uh next up from the chat roll tom hall asks hey ken in retrospect to mixing how long did it take you to start thinking huh i really got this shit uh well tom um a long time and then, you know, it's kind of incremental. You kind of get more comfortable with your decision making. Sprint mixing is the fastest way to start trusting your instincts. I'm telling you, sprint mixing, sprint mixing, sprint mixing. Uh, anyway, um, it took a really long time. Uh, and it's a gradual thing. Nowadays, it's, I don't even, I don't even second guess my shit anymore. Uh, Clay Lahat asks from the chat roll, uh, Clay Lahat, hey Ken, where are you putting the money for promotion for obscene stealers? Uh, mostly into playlisting. Uh, press release and um, uh, I'm doing some like appearances on podcasts and stuff. I'm not paying for that. Uh, and uh, artwork. All of the artwork is hand drawn um, comic book cartoon art. Uh, so that's where the, the three main kind of monthly expenses uh, go for obscene sealers. The playlisting is only effective if you have a great song and if and if you have a playlister who's not black hatting and trying to, you know. You get it. Abraham Knowlton asks, uh, Hey, Ken, do you still use the Verimu on Mixbus? I hear great things. I'm thinking of picking up a plug-in version. Abraham Knowlton, pick up the uh, UAD uh, Manly Verimu. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Um, I still have my outboard uh, Verimu, and it gets uh, regular use, but the in a pinch, the, <laughs> the fucking UAD plug-in sounds like exactly the same. So, yeah, go for it. Um, let's see. I am going to uh, spill to... I'm going to play you guys like 90 seconds of the new Obscene Stealers lyric video for 10 out of 10. It is like uh, cartoon gamified fabulous. Go. <laughs> I'm a god, so send in the best that you got. But me, I'll be gone by the time you arrive. Be careful when choosing the side. I'm a ghost in the dark when I pick you apart. They still trying to catch me, it ain't in the cards. No one can stop me, I'm taking the arms and I'm coming for whoever say they in charge. 10 out of 10, run it back, we could do it again. What's the bet? Where and when? I'm the best of the best and I better be 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, run it back, we could do it again. What's the bet? Where and when? All right, that is my group with Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss, Obscene Steelers. Uh, 10 out of 10. Mm. Uh, and we got a rapper named Fash on that track who fucking murdered it. Uh, well done, Fash. Uh, I'm going to play the Beat Challenge finale. Man, holy shit did you guys throw down for this. There were so many submissions. I think... I managed a bunch of uh, short edits and got one loop from a bunch of people. I think I've got 18 people in here now. Uh, so I'm just going to dig in. I'm going to start by playing the loop that you guys all fed off of. You had to use the loop. And then uh, you guys took it in so many different directions. Let's fucking go. This is the starter. You had to use this. We are kicking it off with William Landry. Tramation. Fingers on the 
Sweet. Ryan Pepin. Hans Callis. Scott Heatley. Hope you're doing good, dude. Hakan Melberg. Lucas triple nine. Ben Kruger. More beats. Steady 808. Mark Van Pari. Mark Van Parla. Beats. Got the gun, Mish Khalil. I just run a muck for some fun. Bring the ruckus, it's no discussion. Disrupt all that, all that. Buddy on buddy when the bud hits. I go insane and flame the destruction. All I see is red. My lead is set, digging in the depths when it's all said and done. Get laid to rest. In third place, Eric Iverson and Jai Tui. Uh, come on. I am the master Minecraft with the pen. Skywalker head solo couldn't now rhyme the kid. For politics objectives is to keep the higher class rich. Then we gon' have to kick down some You get that baby shit. audio crystalline verb. Lighting up the cigar, waiting for the storm. Second place, Bobby Thimgen. Damn, you throw down, dude. I wish I could play the, his whole thing. It is epic AF. Bobby, you get that baby audio crystalline reverb as well. And the winner, Blackout Beats. You get that whole baby audio bundle, baby. Blackout Beats. Weeks have passed. Gone. You were leaving all along and 
least you're reaping what you sow. I'm so long while you're walking on a cloud of water. Now you're taking what you found. If I saved it, how long would it take you to tell me you can't do it and find somebody new? I'm so long. Blackout Beats, baby audio bundle. Ooh. Congrats, Blackout Beats. Uh, so while I'm on here, I'm going to give you guys another pro tip uh, of my own. I'm going to teach you guys how to do a fade out. Now... All right, let's take this uh, blackout beats thing. Say I want to say I want to do a fade out. To tell me you can do it and find somebody new. I'm so lost. I'm so lost. I'm so lost. So, say I want to start fading out about right here. I'm so lost. I want to be out by here. So I'm going to just do a normal fade let me blow this way up so you can see it okay so that's going to be a normal just linear fade that's probably what a lot of you guys do i'm going to teach you why you should be doing something else let's listen to this first it's not bad it's just a nice linear fade <laughs> Okay, this is what I do instead. I survey, kind of, I break it up into maybe five or six segments, and I just go like, okay, segment one. This is currently at 13.9, but I really only want it to be about minus four here. Oh, where is, what am I currently at? Oh, I'm currently at minus 10, so this would be minus 16. So I want this to be like minus 13, and then I'm just gonna spread this out like this so that the fade still keeps going down but it, it goes down in more of like an arc so it stays louder for longer and it doesn't uh, release and then at the end it just basically goes like you're not paying attention anyway now I'm gonna get rid of most of what took you 10 seconds I'm gonna get rid of in three There's your 90 second fade out pro tip. So basically I'm just trying to get it to curve a little bit instead of being just a straight line. It tends to sound and feel a little bit more musical. Uh, man, the show is so action packed tonight. Uh, I am already behind schedule. What's next? Uh, we got, coming up now, we got pro tips from Mark Jackson and Michael Moss, the movie trailer boss. Pay attention, these are both really gold. Uh, I subscribe to both of them. Uh, here they come. Yo, Ken, man. Thanks for having me on. Um, so I was going to do a mastering tip today, but I thought that there was something way more important that we started to see a lot of. And that's people showing up late to sessions. And there's nothing more disrespectful, especially to me. And I'm sure, Ken, like, you feel the same way. It's like, you know, if I'm here at 12 or sessions at 12 and you show up at 1230 or 1, there's just no excuse for it. Uh, in fact, our pro tip is we'll ways where we need to go the night before. We double check what time it is with our manager. Um, and the next day we'll be, we'll be in the area like an hour early. We'll just hang out at a cafe and do whatever. So I don't have any excuse. My car broke down or the train was late or stupid Uber, whatever. It's not my problem. You know, but time is money and it's just so disrespectful to show up late. But there's one thing I can guarantee you, you know, if you, if you want to have accolades, you want some shinier things, you know, you want to sell some records, you're not going to get them if you show up late. That I can guarantee you. So that's my tip. All right, guys. Bye. Michael Ma, second of Gene Steeler's point, 90 second tip. Try not to get too much emotionally attached to your tracks. It makes it much, much harder later to work with the feedback. If you love your tracks too much, uh, you won't change it anymore at the very ending. Okay. Second tip, 
Stop fighting yourself online with other peoples, about your clients, about your friends, about anyone. People are watching you, they definitely know what you're doing, what you're writing, and you could lose a business. Third tip, you can only get better if you practice every day. It's really like that. You have to practice. It's not coming from anywhere. Ken Lewis is just as good as he is, triple A, 4A, 5A, 6A, because he does that since 500 years probably. Fourth it. Even if you get fired from a job, don't answer with a shit email. It could be that a client is coming back to you and it could be one of your biggest clients at all at the very ending. Fifth, if you take a job, never quit it. Always finish a job in the best way possible, even if your client is, you know what I mean. Sixth tip, um, know your rights. Nothing is more boring to your client than explaining you your rights. So search for terms online in the music industry, okay? Like master rights, publishing, pro, etc. Trailer music tip, especially for trailer music people, keep the trailer, the trailer structure. Intro, atmospheric sparse, break, middle part, build it up. That's the part where the story gets uh, told from the movie, you know? People get introduced, etc., etc. Break, final climax, hell is going on, everything is collapsing, etc., etc. I hope this helps. See you soon. Bye bye. All right. I'm going straight to some more Q&A. These are pre-submitted questions. Uh, Chaos Beats 903 asks, Hey Ken, uh, what is a nice simple vocal chain using waves or what would you prefer? Uh, vocal chain using waves. Uh, I start with the Kramer Pi um, compressor on uh, 3 to 1 and 100 millisecond release. Um, that's a dummy box. It's hard to fuck things up with that. And then I usually go Distressor, uh, UAD Distressor, or the Empirical Labs Arouser. Um, and a Waves de -esser. Renaissance de -esser. It's all I ever use. Uh, and then you could use any Waves EQ. I mean, EQs or EQs or EQs. They all kind of model differently, but they're all, you know, they get you the result. Uh, okay. Um, uh, Eric Iverson asks, hey, congratu congratulations to Eric and Iverson on, and uh, Jai Tui on just winning that Crystalline Reverb from Baby Audio. Uh, what, Hey, Ken, what advice do you have for someone who doesn't exactly have a huge book of business right now but is interested in mixing for more artists? That's a tough one because that's what everybody wants to do, myself included. Um, you can get on Sound Better or Engineers. Uh, it's a slow process. You're not going to get flooded with clients at all when you get on one of those sites. But those sites connect you with the possibility of building your clientele. And if you aren't on one of those sites, then you have no possibility of building any clientele through, at least through them. So I would recommend uh, one of those two as a kind of central hub a way to do things. You know, local outreach, make sure that you're known in your area and that uh, the people in your area that record with you talk about you. Uh, Lawrence Jones asks, uh, hey Ken, how do I mix drums? Um, I, I, that's I, that's a, <laughs> that would take far too long to show you, but I am gonna show the breakdown of um, uh, Make the World Go Away later, and I'm showing you all the drum mixing, so pay attention, and that's coming up in like 15 minutes. Uh, Albert asks, hey Ken, uh, how did you get started in mixing audio? I didn't get started as a mixer, I spent First, I was an intern, then I was an assistant, then I was a tracking engineer for years. And then I made the leap after maybe three or four years and many gold records um, as a top tracking engineer in New York City. Then I made the leap to mix engineer. And it took me like a solid fucking year before anybody really started hiring me to mix. And But I just turned down all tracking and eventually it stuck. Okay, I'm going to move on with the show. Ear training. All right. We have multiple instrument identification. The uh, worksheet is in the description of the video you are watching right now. Go get the ear training worksheet. It'll help you follow along. This is multiple instrument identification. So I am going to play you uh, eight different musical examples. Um, let's not show the screen right now. Uh, no, don't show the screen. Um, I'm going to show you eight, I'm going to play you eight different musical examples. You have to tell me everything that you hear and, uh, you can write it all down in the worksheet. 
Uh, you get one point to guess the right group. Say if there's kick, snare, hi-hat, and toms. That's drums. That's one. So the category is drums. And then if you name each individual one, kick, snare, hi-hat, toms, that's four more. So if you have, uh, you know, like, you'll get it. Oh, okay, so there's eight. I'm going to give you two listen-throughs on each one and then the big reveal. So you don't got, you got about 18 seconds per. Pick out everything, write it down fear, fiercely, and then on to the next. Here we go with your training. One. Seven. Try to scream, and it's been 10 years since I turned 18. But I'm not the man that I thought I'd be by now. Now the car just stalls when the light turns green. It's like all my plans to feel like dreams. I'm not sure what it all quite means right now. All right, <clears throat> one more time through from the top, and then the big reveal. One. Stop talking to people, don't give a fuck what you say. Stop talking. 
Stop spending your money on weed, go hop on a plane Stop pointing the finger and start taking some of the blame Let me put you on game The money is up and it's down Seven Now I lose my breath when I try to scream And it's been 10 years since I turned 18 No, I'm not the man that I thought I'd be by now Now the car just stalls when the light turns green It's like all my plans still feel like dreams I'm not sure what it all quite means right now All right, how are you guys feeling about your results? Uh, here is the big reveal. I'm going to play it through one time with the answers on screen, and let's see how you did. One. Blinded by the light. Wrapped up like a douche, another runner in the night. Blind Two. Okay, I want to show you guys something that I want to show. I want to show you guys something uh, that Iron Maiden uh, song that just played. If you didn't hear the bass, this is the bass. Listen. That's where those notes are, but it is a bass guitar and it's way up there. Okay, on to four. Four. Stop talking to people, don't give a fuck what you say. Stop, stop spending your money on weed, go hop on a plane. Stop, stop pointing the finger and start taking some of the blame. Let me put you on game. Yeah. The money is up and it's down. Seven. Hey, uh, did y'all know that I recorded that cello? Yep. Once upon a time. Now I lose my breath when I try to scream. And it's been 10 years since I turned 18. No, I'm not the man that I thought I'd be by now. Now the car just stalls when the light turns green. It's like all my plans to feel like dreams. I'm not Show what it all quite means right now. How did everybody do? Uh, I hope you did super awesome, fantastic. Um, uh, I would struggle with these. I would struggle a little bit myself with these. So if you're not nailing it, don't feel bad. Uh, not even I would get 100% on them. Um, from the chat roll, uh, Jimuchi? Musici? 
I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't pronounce that. Uh, hey, Ken, what it, what typically is the culprit for muddying up the mids on a song with vocals on a pop rock or a rap track? Um, so what clouds up vocals in the mid range? Usually things like pianos and synths and guitars. Uh, you know, um, often I use something like Greenhouse. Uh, if you can see the screen, we have a plugin. Mixing Night Audio. Uh, this show has a plugin. Greenhouse. It is the best vibe box on planet Earth. Um, it's like a saturator, spreader, modulator. Uh, it's super fantastic. And Mixing Night Audio is nearly an alpha on our next plugin, which God, it is so fucking good. I cannot wait to show you guys the next plugin. We are super, super excited about it. And we uh, pulled in Telegraph Creative again to do the, the GUI on the second plugin, so you know it's going to be super GUI-tastic. Um, all right, before I get too off track here, what is supposed to be the... Oh, all right, I'm going to give you a, another pro tip that I've been meaning to give you for a while. So um, uh, Eric Iverson, and uh, this might apply to you, one of the things we as engineers and mixers and producers and creatives can do is make sure that people can find us and the work that we have done. So, like, I have my own website. Uh, we're revamping it right now, um, but I have KenLewis.com. So if you need to get at me for anything, get at me at KenLewis.com. Um, so you got to have your own website. Um, and if you have a discography of any note, then, you know, uh, put your discography up there. Make sure that people can find uh, the work that you do. And um, and then here's, where is my contact, Ken? So super easy to get a hold of me if you need to. Um, so A, you need to make sure you have a website. But now there are credits websites coming out. There are two awesome uh, things. There's jaxta.com. And let me show you. Oh, I have these. Uh, do I have these? No, I don't. Crap. Um, let me pull them up on Firefox. All right, I'm going to show you jaxta.com, and I'm going to show you Muso AI. Uh, I don't know if you've heard any of them. If, if anybody follows me on Insta, I post up uh, my Muso numbers uh, often. Muso.ai. Okay. Uh, so these are uh, credit harvesting services. Jaxta.com. Okay. Oh, I need to be signed in for this. Let me see if I can find my Muso. Yep. Okay. So, if you just do a common search for me on Muso AI, I'm over here in the professionals. Uh, and then I have a whole thing that comes up. And so anybody that goes here and, and searches for me can see all of my credits. And boy, do they do a really, really great job of credit harvesting. Um, I was really, really surprised. They do it by, uh, you can do it by year. So like it goes all the way back to 1993 at the beginning of my career. Holy shit. Um, and uh, so you, you can... You can use this site in all sorts of ways. Let me show you the Muso AI app because it does some really awesome things. So the Muso AI app does analytics. So here's the stupid part of this. Okay, so it'll give you all-time analytics. So all-time I have 30.6 billion streams across all of my work. Um, that is a little bit nutty for me. I don't even, I can't comprehend that. But to me, this is a nuttier uh, number. In the last seven days, my credits have accumulated streams on 138 million <laughs> streams. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Like, this is stuff I had no idea was even happening. And then with uh, Muso AI, then it, it tells you, like, I can go look at my lifetime, all-time streams, and then it shows you categorizes in order uh, what your oh so no, wait there we go it categorizes in order of how many streams they got from most to least so like my hundredth most streamed song that I've ever had in my career was Danny Kane Damaged um, 
120 is Who Will Survive in America, Kanye West. 130 is Closer, RM from BTS. 140 is uh, Time Flies. 150 is John Legend. 160 is uh, Des Rocks. One, you get the idea. Um, so, and you can categorize these. You can get rid of credits that aren't yours. You get the idea. JAXA is kind of a similar thing, but it's more website-based, and they, they track kind of different things. I think right now Muso AI is better at aggregating. I think they have found more of my credits. Uh, JAXTA is getting there, but I don't think they aggregate to enough sites yet. Um, but you need to be findable. Even if you're on uh, engineers and sound better, you need to be findable and you need to have something that you can send out to people. So there's my pro tip for you. Uh, I'm going to show you just the first like minute and a half through the end of the first chorus of the video for the single from Bruce Sudano, Make the World Go Away, um, that I produced. And then I'm going to do a production breakdown of it for you guys and show you all of the coolest things that I did with it. So uh, roll the video. Can you take the weight off my shoulders? I'm tired of carrying it around Feels like a ton of bricks somewhere in. Oh Lord, only you can help me now fucking cinematography holy shit when they sent me that video after it was done i was just like whoa it's so i'm a sucker for like earth tones and like dark moody shit so that video really caught me uh super well done bruce um now i'm gonna uh show you what i did um, so you know i talk a lot about having vision uh, and having vision as a mixer and having vision as a producer. In this case, uh, I first needed vision as a producer because uh, Bruce gave me a demo of the song and I had to listen to this demo and go like, okay, where do I think I can take this based on what the song is telling me? And I'm going to play you a little bit of the demo if this song ever comes up. Come on, here we go. All right. Um, first thing I noticed was... Uh, the song was too long. His arrangement was like four minutes. And four minutes nowadays, I mean, you need a really captivating song if it's four minutes. I think we got it down to the radio version is maybe 320, 329. And uh, that's about as long as I would ever want a song nowadays. It's TikTok world. Um, you know, people's attention spans are just gone. So... If you're going to go into three minutes uh, plus, you better hold their attention. That's all I'm saying. Um, so uh, I'm going to play you from, I'm going to play you the demo. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, you just heard a bit of the final. Um, so here is the actual, boom, demo. <laughs> Notice I got rid of the intro. Can you take the weight off my shoulders? I'm tired of carrying it around. Feels like a ton of bricks somewhere. And oh Lord, only you can help me now. Can you lift me up? Take me high. So you get the idea. Um, now I'm going to play like second half of the the pre I cut one of the things I did was I cut the pre-chorus in half and I cut all of the instrumental intro uh, completely off so this is my version from jump can you take the weight off my shoulders 
Shoulders. So right away, you're hearing lead vocal in two seconds. That is done and done. If if they don't need that intro, if there's nothing about that intro that's like calling out to them, to the listener to go like, this is the setup you need, then consider getting rid of it. I didn't need it. So uh, straight to the verse and then straight from, you see this pre-chorus was twice as long in his version. I cut this in half and just removed two of the lines. Uh, and I'll play you from, yeah, let's play. I'll, I'll, I'm going to go back and forth between demo and, uh, and mix bus. Feels like a ton of bricks somewhere. Can you lift me? Only you can help me now. Somebody set the room on fire. There ain't no easy way to put it out. Make the world. And then, so you can hear the the difference in approach in the chorus. Um, but I'm just on a on the arrangement note. Uh, I come straight out of the chorus right back into verse two, whereas the demo has a post chorus going on. And I just again, I was like, um, um, you know, I was just like, I didn't feel like it needed it. Um, so I got rid of all of the stuff that I felt like didn't matter. Um, arrangement let me show what i got a whole bunch of notes that i wanted to show you um also you notice from the demo uh he had uh doubled lead vocal in the verses and i have a single lead vocal and that was very intentional feels like a ton of bricks somewhere can you take the weight off my shoulders so i felt like the demo i wasn't sure if it was a group or a artist or you know as a general listener so i wanted to make sure that the listener got the lead vocal from the artist without distractions um got right to it uh one of the cool things about this song is the backing vocals so i'm really lucky i have a lot of super super talented friends uh that i can call on to play on my sessions and hire them to come and enhance my records for me um i reached out to a bunch of my friends on this record irene blackman sings all of the backgrounds man irene irene is a member of the blessed choir which is uh, my choir that i've used on kanye and j cole and popcon and so many others um so i reached out to irene and had her sing backgrounds on it. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. That's Irene in the background. Uh, I reached out to my good friend Dylan Wissing uh, to play drums on this thing. Dylan is, uh, you can find Dylan at IndieStudioDrummer.com. Uh, Dylan Wissing. And he's got like 20 drum kits and he's got a great recording space and he's got all the microphones already pre-set up and everything. So I literally send him the song. It's already on grid. Um, and Dylan and I have a conversation about mood, feel, approach, goals, what I'm trying to get the song to translate like. And then he cuts the song in his own studio and sends me the drums and multi-tracks them all out for me, records it perfectly. Uh, it's a really fantastic service. Um, so if you need live drums on your song, call Dylan Wissing at Indie Studio Drummer. Um, so Dylan put down all the percussion, the djembe, the tambourine, all of the multi-track drums, and he delivered these multi-track like this. Also, he over-delivers. So he also gave me, where are they? Burr, 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 maybe I hid them. Um, uh, he gives you two pairs of overheads and a bunch of different room tracks. I only kept in the mix what I felt was needed for this particular song. Um, uh, what's, what else do I want to show you on this? Um, uh, the bass guitar, Antar Goodwin. Um, again, I sent the song Minus Bass to Antar. I, I think I had 
I had Dylan put drums on it because I needed a an establishment of groove for everybody else to play to. And I knew Dylan would be my rock that could deliver that for me. Um, so Dylan laid down a killer drum track, and then I sent it to Antar Goodwin. He put down four different uh, bass parts, and uh, I comped all of those different bass parts down to one a uh, single bass track that flows throughout the whole song. You can see whenever I'm, whenever you can see a different segment, that's a different take. So all of these different segments are different takes that were all just put into one take and color coded. And um, so the bass has all been comped. Uh, the Hammond organ was played by Marcus Lauer. Uh, I think Marcus is in Germany. Um, so you know I got the the whole world involved in this. Uh, again, Marcus did the same thing, put down four different Hammond uh, things. We had a conversation. I told him basic mood and approach, and he went to work and delivered me four different ideas, and I kind of comped them all together into one Hammond part. Then I did the same thing. The last thing that we added was horns. Called up my good friend Danny Flam at New York Brass, one of the best horn players in the fucking world. Uh, Danny played almost all of the horns on all of the lights for me. All of the lights, I produced the horn section on that. It's all live horns. Uh, Danny Flam played almost all of it. Tony Garuso played the uh, high, high trumpet on it. Um, and Danny played the horn section on this. Uh, and that was the last thing that I added. Um, and here, yeah, here's the horn section. These are comps. So, you know, Danny gave me a ton of tracks, and then I in a completely separate session that's only horns against the two track. I comped and blended and pitched and every, anything that I needed to do, I shaped these up into uh, two track stereo comps of each section um, and then brought them into the uh, session this way. So I have a bunch of other like secondary sessions that are pieces of this session that eventually get imported and moved into this session. It's all live horns. stuff uh so uh so that's what i did i called all my friends but when you call your friends you got to have something to tell them right like you gotta be able to guide them towards the finish line that you're looking for and that goes back to when bruce sudano sent me the original demo first thing i did was just kind of waited until i could center myself and no pun intended, make the world go away so that I could give 100% of my attention to listening to the song and trying to ascertain with all of my focus and attention, what is this song trying to tell me? What do I, where do I hear, how do I hear this song? How do I want it to speak to me? How does Bruce want it to speak? So... Uh, I came up with two targets. My main target was the theme to uh, the HBO show The Sopranos. Um, is Grizzly Adams paying attention? Grizzly Adams is, I'm pretty sure, the biggest Sopranos fan on planet Earth next to Chris Webby. Uh, so um, here's the Sopranos theme. I'm sure you recognize it. This was a big inspiration for instrumentation. Not really feel, um, a bit of feel, but certainly instrumentation. So 
Uh, you can probably hear the similarities between that Sopranos theme song and That was also something I added that, uh, uh, big flick. <laughs> um, here it is. Oh, so Bruce loved it when I did that. I basically, uh, put this big stop right before the chorus. So all of the energy goes, you know, you're grooving right along in the pre and then everything stops and it sets you up for a much bigger entrance to the chorus. And if you listen to his demo, it plays through. Here, I'll just loop like the last line of the pre into the first line of the chorus, and I'll go demo to me, to me. Oops, sorry, that's the Sopranos theme. This is. There ain't no easy way to put it out. Make the world go away. There ain't. So he doesn't give you any break. It's just steady drums right into the hook, and there's there's no real setup. Listen to what I did. There ain't no easy way to put it out. Make the world go away. There ain't no so to me, if I'm the listener and I have stopped paying attention for a moment, and or maybe I'm just not yet totally caught by the song, and all of a sudden. The energy just gets sucked out of it, draws my, I'm like, what the fuck just happened? Boom, make the world go. And I'm like, okay, I'm in. So these moments, you know, think about your transitions and your setups, how things enter, how things exit uh, from one section into the other. And whenever it makes sense, you know, put, put some, put some stank on it. Uh, from the chat roll, Clay Lahat asks, hey, Ken, would it be possible to get an idea of what it costs an artist to create a song like this? Well, Clay, first you need to realize that I'm producing it, and I'm not just any producer. I'm a Grammy winning? I haven't won a Grammy for producing. I have produced on Grammy winning records. So I'm in a certain price range. Um, that's going to be the bulk of all of your expenses. Uh, and then, you know, um, you can reach out to the... Uh, Musicians themselves, Antar Goodwin and uh, Dylan Wissing, they're both actually on Sound Better. You can uh, catch them there. Irene, um, I don't know if Irene is on Sound Better or not, but um, she's on Facebook. So, uh, you know, um, you got to pay the musicians, you got to pay the producer, you got to pay the recording engineer in the studio, you got to pay the mixer. Um, in my case, I am already all of those things and uh, can absorb all of those costs. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know what else to, I don't know if that's a good answer. Sorry. Uh, Simmer Music asks, hey, Ken, uh, do you ever mix using headphones? And if so, what's your favorite headphone? Uh, I do, uh, especially Atmos. You absolutely need your, Atmos is a first headphones and then speakers. So I, I always my Atmos mixes, I make sure that they translate in the room great on all the speakers, but also in the headphones and that the headphones sound to me like what the speakers sound like. Um, so that's super important. Uh, and stereo mixing, I think, is just as important. I use the, the Odyssey uh, LCD, LCD XC. Yeah, Odyssey LCD XC uh, headphones. I think they're like 13, 1500 bucks. Um, but they carry the 808s all the way down. They're clear as a bell. They're like wearing speakers on your head. They're a little bit big and heavy. But the localization and the clarity of those uh, headphones is fucking off the rails. Um, what else did I want to show you about Bruce? Oh, I want to show you these. Okay, the other, uh, the other sonic inspiration, not necessarily um, parts and stuff, but sonic inspiration uh, was a song that I mixed for an artist named Alan Raymond out of uh, Universal Canada. This song called Main Room. And I mixed this for Alan, and as soon as I heard Bruce's song, I thought of this for Vibe.
Uh, I see the problem here. So that's Alan Raymond main room. Main room. Uh, I use that as sonic inspiration, just as a you know a guide vibe check. Um, and the man himself showed up, Dylan Wissing. Uh, Dylan is on the chat roll. Everybody say hi to Dylan. Uh, Dylan asks, hey, Ken, how do you get those incredible live kick drum sounds? It's you, baby. All I do is balance your shit. Um, let me show you. It's really, uh, here we go. Um, okay, so the first trick, Dylan gives me three kick drum tracks. So one is inside of the shell, maybe two inches from the beater on the inside. The other is probably at the back of the shell, uh, right around where the open hole is. And then he's got one of those sub kick pack things right in front of it. Um, and this is what these three things sound like on the kick. But you also got to remember, the sound of the drums is not only the close mics, it's also the overheads. So when you put all these things together, um, here's the full drum track with djembe and tambourine. Okay, so let me show you auto align. So this is Sound Radix Auto Align. Uh, boom. Here we go. Okay, so I took the kick out, and I made that the master. So here's the kick out. Here's the kick in. You send a detector out of the kick out, and you put Auto Align on the kick in, and you tell it, pick up the kick out, and then analyze it and tell me if I need to correct phase or timing, and that's what it does. Um, we'll, so right now there's no phase uh, correction, and we're 24 samples off. And let's see if, and then the sub is 25 samples the other direction. So uh, let's see if auto align matters with these. Let's get it down to just the kick. These are pretty... I don't hear it so much on that. Um, let's see if I can hear it on snares. You can hear it on this. When uh, this is correcting the uh, alignment between the top snare mic and the bottom snare mic so all auto align does and i think auto align 2 is coming out soon uh so keep a keep an eye out for that but auto align's been great um so basically what it does is it says okay well you want the bottom mic to be in phase and in timing with the top mic okay feed me the top mic and i'm gonna align it for you ready go boom so let the ai shit do its work for you uh so basically i've uh I am auto aligning the individual uh, tracks together, top and bottom snare. And then I took the combination of the snare and I fed that out its own send. And I am aligning the overheads. Receive three is the left overhead. And then I'm sending four. So the left overhead is aligned to the snare. And the right overhead is aligned to the snare. Uh, that's what's happening. And then the hi-hat is, I think, the hi-hat. No, I didn't align the hi-hat. There we go. Um, so first thing, I always align my drums. Getting phase correction really makes a huge difference. I cannot tell you um, what a big difference it makes. Uh, I wanted to show you the snare reverb. Um, I'm using very few effects on this song. But this one, this is a Seventh Heaven... Um, from Liquid Sonics. I'm using a small wooden room on the snare. And all of it, all it does, listen to what it, I'm gonna, boom, here we go. Yep. 
Yes. Can you even fucking believe that just happened? So the key here is that it's a really short, tight room. So it's going to take what you feed it, and it's just going to make it a little bit bigger and spread it out a little bit. You don't want the real big sense of a big reverb on the snare, or at least I don't in this particular song. I just wanted the snare to have a bit more impact and uh, size in the mix. Um, and this, uh, this short wooden, uh, small wood room reverb does it. Uh, but then in the bridge, I did something totally different. See, I am sending, before I wasn't sending out three and four. Now I'm only in the bridge. Let me see if I can show you this. There's three and four. See how three and four is muted until the bridge when it automates open. And then after the bridge, it automates back close. So I'm feeding this into a spring reverb. All right. One of my favorite spring reverbs is this uh, audio thing springs. Uh, you got to make sure and turn the noise off and turn the dry all the way down if it's on an aux. Um, but it's got a bunch of different uh, characteristic uh, springs and it's really nasty and, and hangs well in the mix. Uh, listen to how well this thing cuts. You get to the point of the overload. Uh, I'm going to go to Marcus Manerson, Mixing Nightman of Mystery, and then we are coming straight back here. Do you guys have Marcus Manerson in the um, booth? All right. Uh, let's cue to Marcus, and then I'm coming straight back to Bruce Sudano, Make the World Go Away. Boom. What's good, Mixing Night family? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night, Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night, Man of Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night, Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk about 10 tips that you can use as a music creator and as a professional in the audio space. Let's get right into it. Tip number one, be yourself because everyone else is taken. Be yourself. Tip number two, learn your DAW. What's the best DAW? The best DAW is the one you know. Tip number three, take a break. Sometimes you're so engulfed in the music that you're working on, in that mix that you're working on, you're doing your sprint mixing, you just need to take a break. You need to go watch a movie, read a book, go for a walk, play a game, take a nap, whatever you need to do to give your mind and your ears a break from the project you're working on. Take a break, go do that, and come back to it with some fresh ears. Tip number four, finish it. If you start it, finish it. Done is better than perfect. You'll figure things out on the next track. If you don't finish it, maybe you have a sample pack that you can release from the idea you created or a drum pattern that you can start selling or giving out to a community. Finish it, whatever it is, put it out there, release it to the world. You would be surprised at what happens. Learn more. Always be learning about your DAW. Always be learning about the music business. Always be learning about sync licensing, learning about new genres, learning about marketing and distribution. This all ties together. Learn about social media, how this all ties together to your music business and to your audio dreams and goals. Tip number six, consistency is key. Create music often, use scheduling. There are scheduling apps all over the place on our devices now. Schedule creativity, use the calendar, schedule social media, schedule your time to create music daily uh, or however frequently it works for you, whether it's daily or every couple days, whatever works for your schedule, but be consistent with that. Tip number seven, know your strengths and weaknesses. Do it if you know it or can learn it fast. Know if you are a fast learner. Know if there's something that you are willing to learn. Know if you can't do it, if you don't have time to do it or whatever the case is. Know what your strengths and weaknesses are, and maybe you can find collaborators whose strengths supplement your weaknesses. Tip number eight, have a plan. What is the plan for your next release? Is it to get it to sync licensing to an A&R, to an artist, to a rapper, to a singer, to a songwriter? What is the plan for your next session, your next collaboration? Always have a plan for, or an end goal for what you have in mind. Maybe you're working on something for a specific project. What is the plan? Have a plan, write it down, have it in your mind, but always have that plan ready. Learn to adapt. Tip number nine, plans change. So you have a plan, but plans do change. Ideas spark new ideas. You ever work on a song and you have a new idea and you're like, I got to go work on this song or record it. Capture it all and be ready to adapt. Capture it all, uh, whether on your phone or in a notes app or whatever case you have. Um, 
whatever uh, device you have to capture that idea, capture it, learn to adapt, and go back to that idea down the road. Tip number 10, do not post everything to social media. If you are in the studio, be in the studio, not online, not scrolling your TikTok posts. Uh, maybe reshare. If somebody else posts you in the studio with them, with an artist, you can reshare that. But just be professional. Um, I think you all know what kind of etiquette to have in the studio. Just make sure you are professional there. Bonus tip, look at the calendar. We are entering a great time as a music creator because what's happening this coming weekend, you have Grammy weekend in LA, you have the Pro Bowl, which I believe is in Phoenix. You have the Super Bowl in Phoenix. You have Magic in Las Vegas. You have NBA All-Star Weekend in Salt Lake City. This, these all happen back to back. Um, then you have CIAA in Baltimore. You have two weeks of spring break. Then you have South by Southwest. So all these are happening back to back starting this weekend. Um, I got this from an incredible podcast called The Cheat Code. And what's great about this is if you have a song called Championships, or winning, you might want to release it around the Super Bowl or Grammy weekend or one of these weekends where you are celebrating. If you have a, a song called Celebration, you want to release it around these weekends. So you can tie your release schedule or your song or your mix to events that are happening, um, to holidays and things like that. That is all the tips I have for you. I know we flew through this, but these are just some ideas to get your mind going and also some tips that you can use as a music creator. Be safe and be well. This has been Marcus Madison with another Mixed Night Meta Mystery Moment. Uh, be safe and be well, everyone. All right. All right. Peace. Thank you, Marcus Manners and Mixing Night Man of Mystery. You always bring the best segments. Thank you. Uh, before I get back to Bruce Sudano, I'm going to answer a couple questions and I'm going to do the last pro tips of the night. From the chat roll, Kim Gulbranson asks, Hey, Ken, have you ever tested VSX headphones from Slate? I have the VSX. They're, they're here somewhere. I have never tested the software from them. I couldn't give the first shit what everybody else's rooms sound like. My room sounds great. I trust my room. I don't need to rely on everybody else's rooms. Theoretically, if it helps you, I'm, I'm all for anything that, that helps you find a finish line. Um, but the funny thing is I love the VSX for how lightweight they are, and they're pretty darn flat without any of the software rocking. Um, so they're great for tracking. They're a good reference headphone uh, for mixing. I'll bounce back and forth between my LCD XCs from Audis, uh, Audi and uh, the Slates. Um, so there you go. Uh, Dr. Airhead from the chat roll asks, Dr. Airhead asks, hey, Ken, uh, what are the most common mistakes a beginner would make when they are new to mixing? And do you have any tips for such mistakes? Of course I do. Um, first tip is you're doing too much. You're probably doing way, way, way too much. Uh, look at my mix. Do you see a shit ton of plugins? I don't. I see a ton of tracks that have no treatment at all and bare minimum on what else is needed. The main most important thing is striking great balances. That's what sprint mixing teaches you. Um, but here's a couple other pro tips for you. Uh, when you're getting close to a finish line on a mix where you think, maybe I'm done, slide your chair back three feet away from the controls and play it from top to bottom and don't move. Close your eyes and just listen. It will be a completely and utterly different listening experience for you. You will hear things that sitting here for the last two hours you did not hear. Uh, and until you can sit back here and listen all the way down without hearing problems, then your mix isn't done. The other uh, way to do that is the down the hall or down the stairs listen. Um, I usually open the studio door and, and walk down the stairs and sit there and listen to my mix on blast. I'm basically hearing a, an, a, you know, a mono version coming down the hallway towards me, and I'm listening for, can I hear every piece? Uh, is it you know, is it balanced? Can I understand the lead, lead vocal? Is it hitting me emotionally? Uh, you know, because that's the way most people are going to hear it, not perfectly sitting in front of speakers. That's just not the way it is. Um, okay, I'm going to go to the last pro tip of the night. This is from Scrizzly Adams in Kairos. Uh, thank you, both of you heavy hitter motherfuckers. You guys are awesome. Here we go. Hey, guys, Kairos here dropping a 90-second pro tip from Mixing Night with Ken Lewis. Uh, this one is for anyone that works a lot overseas in music. Get yourself a great advisor and representation. You know, I have seen way too many great deals fall through and money being cheated from good people because not enough publishers talk about this. You need to have people that can help bridge your creative work into the culture and expectations for systems that are already in place. In order to find success, you have to create the right environment for your goals. 
And that includes having the right publisher or manager for you, you know, rather than having a publisher based on what they did for someone else. You want to build a great team around you because I think that ultimately leads to purpose. And remember that while passion is for individuals, finding purpose goes beyond yourself. So how do we find these people? We need to seek real mentorship and stop listening to someone else's experience to dictate your own path. If you're in this community and are investing into relationships, you're on your way. This is an excellent community for creators. You can also check out my joint Discord community with Talkback on Podcast in the links. Let's continue to move and grow together. Take care, guys. 90 second pro tip. Um, as a recording artist, I firmly believe you should focus on your strengths while still having a fundamental understanding of every part of the business, the art around you, whether that's in the studio, live, you know, the boardroom, the business, understand the mixing, understand the mastering, but focus on your strengths. Um, I think there are a lot of people out there saying, no, you can do everything yourself. And I think you should have an understanding and the ability to do everything yourself. But if you're not great at mixing, leave mixing to someone who's a master at mixing and find a way to make that work, you know, whether you know, financially, motivationally, whatever. Um, you know, if you're not the best guitar player, get a great guitar player. Find what, you know, makes you special and you amazing as an artist. And rather than being great at that, try to be the absolute best at that while still having an understanding of every other component. Um, I've heard this also applies to film. You know, some of the greatest movie stars of all time are also, you know, have an understanding of every other component of filmmaking so they're able to give direction but you know they're they're leaving the cinematography up to someone who wants to be the greatest cinematographer of all time so again one more time focus on your strengths try to be the best at it while having understanding of every other component around you all right thank you screwsley and kairos uh so i had a ton of people send me um the pro tips tonight I probably left nine out of the broadcast. I'm going to play them next time. So thank you to all of the uh, uh, fucking high-level heavy hitters that reached out to me and sent me pro tips. They're all going to get used, and I really appreciate you guys. Okay, back to Irene Blackman and her um, fucking amazing backgrounds. Listen to these. Boom. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Yeah, baby. So she has two notes. She has uh, make the world go away. Make the world go away. So she's got a two-part harmony. Make the world go away. Make the world. Uh, is there three or two? I think it's two. Um, here's the magic sauce of this shit. I'm not treating any of the original vocals uh, on their source tracks, and I'm fanning them out kind of around the spectrum. Sometimes I go hard left and right. Sometimes I kind of fan them around. This time this felt really good, so I went with it. Here is the sauce, this Saturn II shit. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Okay, so how am I doing this? So, um... The Saturn II can be broken up into different frequency bands. So this will tell you, this frequency band goes from 150 hertz to 1.5K. And then the next one, this one goes from 1.5 all the way up to 4.5. Then it's 4.5 to 8 and then above 8. And down here is 0 to 150. So you can treat each band differently. And let me show you how that means. So if I'm on band 3, which is right in the mid-range of the vocal... Uh, I could switch it from old tape to, say, heavy saturation. Uh, I'll play it, and then I'll switch it, and you can hear the difference of what, how and what you can tailor. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. I don't want that. I want that old tape shit. Make the world go away. If I wanted to emphasize or de-emphasize this band overall, I can turn it up or turn it down. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Same with this kind of upper enunciation band. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. 
Now, you see I softened this band up, and you might ask, well, why, Ken? Why did you soften that band up? Well, that's really where I want Bruce Sudano's vocals to really shine through. So um, I'm taking a little notch out of the background so that Bruce can really sit right in the mix where I want him and so that she can envelop his vocal and really enhance it. And let me show you what that sounds like in the mix. Here's her muted, then I'll bring her in. Make the world go away. Make the world How boring it is without this Saturn. Make, <laughs> no, no offense, Irene. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Make the world. That's just clean and pretty, and there's nothing clean and pretty about this song. This song is about everything just being too fucking much, and you just need an escape from everything. And you don't want a pretty little beautiful escape. You want the like the God, fuck, let's just make the mmm. And that's what the Saturn II is giving you right here. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Make the world and then I've just got the Sood too, just to kind of take some of the harshness out of it. Sooth is nice. Make the world go away. Make the world go away. Not too much. Uh, what else did I want to show you guys before we wrap? another mixing night episode thanks for joining us tonight man i've had the funnest fucking night. i love this show i hope you guys like it too uh tell your friends next episode we're back the first wednesday of march i don't know when that is but <laughs> it's the first wednesday of march it's i think it's i think it's march 1st because uh february has 28 days so i think we're back on march 1st okay i got oh i wanted to show you this overhead trick that i did um, and I wasn't even intending to show you guys this when I, I just did this as natural. Okay, so check out the overheads. I am DSing them. Does anybody see where my frequency is? 2K. So it doesn't go any lower, I would probably go lower than this. I'm basically using this as a dynamic EQ. I'm reducing the initial mid-range impact of the snare drum in the overheads. I'm reducing the initial impact, the stick hit, of the snare in the overhead. So I'm removing some of the snare from the overheads so that the dry, focused snare mics can do more of the heavy lifting. And uh, let me just go, okay. Here is the frequency band that it's centered on. And you'll see I'll, I'll bypass it. Don't listen to the body of it because it's not affecting most of the decay of the drum. It's affecting the stick of the drum. So listen to the difference in attack of the snare. So I'm just giving a little bit of extra room in the mid-range for the vocals to breathe, for the dry snare to breathe, uh, and for the overheads to just not get so built up in the mid-range. Um, so if you never thought about using a de-esser for that kind of control, I use that, like I'll use a de-esser like this for squeaks on an acoustic guitar up around like here. Uh, and, you know, and it'll just start removing the squeaks whenever you slide chords, but it doesn't really touch much of anything else. So, de can be uh, really fantastic dynamic EQs when used uh, in different ways. From the chat roll, Elijah Parkin asks, Hey Ken, do you ever worry about the effect that aligning the overheads to the snare has on the kick or tom sounds? Of course I worry about that, and I listen to everything. And I listen in solo. I mean, I'm doing the very, very quick and dirty version of showing you what I do. 
but I'm sitting, you know, when I'm mixing drums, I'm usually I'm uh, mixing them with the whole song going. But when I'm listening specifically to is my auto align better or worse, I'm listening in solo, very under a microscope and I'm saying better or worse, better or worse, which is, is this aligning well or not? What's happening here? Better or worse? Um, and I'm doing that on every single one. And very often I may go, okay, I don't love how the overheads are aligning to the snare. Let me over, let me align the overheads to the kick or, uh, you know, something like that. Let me just try different things. Like the hi-hat, sometimes I align the hi-hat to the overhead above it. Sometimes I align it to the snare drum. Sometimes I don't align it at all. And I almost never align the room tracks because the room tracks, you want that depth and distance uh, from the kit. That's what gives you the that sound of a room. If you correct the room and make the room hit uh, line up with the snare, you lose all the depth of the room. Um, all right, I hope that uh, answered your questions for you. Um, Ten minutes to go on the broadcast. What else do I want to show you? Um, uh, one note. So uh, I had I had Bruce recut the lead vocal after almost all. Of, I think everything except for the horns was done. And I reached back out to Bruce and I was like, listen, I love the original vocal, but on the you never know and let's find out, um, give me like 10 new takes and just send me the 10 raw takes and let me comp them together and let me find the best of the best. So that's what he did. Um, he sent me LV1 through, da, 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 there's, there's 10 or so. Um, all of these, and I just went through with a fine tooth comb, comped every single word found the best of the best of every performance and put them all together so that when you're sitting there listening, it sounds like it was sung one time by one artist and it was the best. Come on, lay down, lay down. And it was the best time they ever damn sung the damn song in their life. Lay down. Come on, be a good girl. Yes. Oh, she is such a sweetie pie. Good girl, Mass. Um, so, uh, Larry, where are you going? A little treat hound. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Hmm. Yeah, why don't you spill to that real quick? We have a little treat for anybody still paying attention right now. Uh, we, you know, it's a funny thing. Friends uh, used uh, 10 out of 10 in a sink. I couldn't even believe it myself, but hear it. I just, I... Marcel, where are you going with that disc? <laughs> you are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. Problem, whoever won't it, get it on sight, it's like fighting a toddler. Now you a target, I'm being honest. Stay on your side, then they get into the bother. Ten out of ten, put it back, we can do it today. What's the bet? Right. I couldn't believe Friends is using our music. That is mind-blowing. Oh, my God. Please share that with your friends and uh, spread the word about Obscene Stealers. <laughs> Me and Michael Moss are having so much fun with Obscene Stealers. I cannot even tell you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm, uh, I'm an artist now. It's the weirdest thing in the whole fucking world. But, um, but I'm having a blast. Uh... I wanted to show you. Boop, boop, boop. Um. Oh. Uh. Let me show you how I'm mixing lead vocals. You guys always want to see the vocal shit. I know. I know. Here we go. Okay. Why is this? Um. Here's my vocal chain. Start with auto tune. I use auto-tune super gently. I never want to hear it as an effect. I just wanted to correct the basic imperfection. Can you take the weight off my shoulders? And then, do you know what tilt does? This is a tilt. So tilt, I don't know why I'm beach balling right now. 
Um, Ooh, that's not good. We might be... Oh, and Terry's doesn't like that very much. Uh, I don't know if we're beach balling in there or what's happening, um, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> So, well, if you can still hear me, I'll, I'll just talk. So, T-bone is a tilt. And a tilt basically takes, if this is your frequency range from low frequency to high frequency, and this is louder and this is quieter, if you tilt this way, you're turning up the high frequencies and you're turning down the low frequencies. And the low frequencies at the bottom subs are getting turned down the most, and the frequencies at the tippy top highest are getting turned up the most just like that and you want to turn down the highs and turn up the lows you just do that that is all a tilt does and tilt is fantastic for say you hear a, a lead vocal and you ask yourself i'm still beach balling here but and you ask yourself um huh it's a little bit dark and it's a little bit bassy or muddy your first instinct is to dig in with an eq right wrong I mean, it's not wrong, but, you know, but a tilt just evens out that frequency spectrum really, really effectively sometimes before you ever have to think about grabbing an EQ or anything like that. And, uh, uh, and then you can compress and your compressor doesn't have to work as hard. I usually go DS or after the compressor. I think this time I did uh, auto-tune T-bone. Kramer Pi, uh, 100 millisecond release, 3 to 1 ratio. Uh, UAD Distressor, I usually 6 to 1 with a medium slow attack and a super fast release. Um, and I put the mid range de detectors on. Uh, then RDSer from Waves, it's the only one I've ever used. Um, it's fine, it does great. I can, it's versatile. Uh, in fact, I've got two DSers, so I'm probably going after like a mid-range um, on one of them the way I do, uh, like just like I did with the snare drum. And then I'm probably going after the, the harsh S's and T's and stuff like that on the, on the top of it. Um, so <laughs> it's looking like my Pro Tools is done. So I have no idea what I did to piss this thing off, but I'm thinking Antari somehow is not uh, reading what it's supposed to read. Um, no, I can even move that. <laughs> I don't, can I play? No, I can't play. It won't play anything. Um, so I think, uh, unless you guys got any questions on the chat roll, let me just go through these and see if there's any last questions that I can tackle before I wish you all adieu. Uh, Albert asks, hey, Ken, how, how did you get started in mixing audio? Man, four track recorder when I was 16 years old demo after demo after demo in my basement on four track cassettes not this DAW anybody with a DAW nowadays if you're complaining about your gear fuck off I mean your tools nowadays are a hundred times better than anything we dreamed about having when I was your age when I was younger and uh, learn your tools make inspired stuff from them uh, you don't have to have all the tools you have to have, you have to make what you have sound great. And if you don't have great song uh, sounds, then go to Splice or you know buy a couple of VSTs. They're cheap nowadays, um, and you know do your thing. Let's see, do I have any last? Um, ta -ta -ta. What are ways to? Uh, Joseph Michael West asks, Hey Ken, what are ways to get more presence in a guitar track? Uh, tilt can help. Um, I usually grab a Pultec, uh, like an EQP1A, and I'll open up uh, 5K or 8K seems to be the, the heavy guitar bands that really make it jump out and come to life in a mix. Um, 5K or 8K on the uh, uh, Pultec EQP1A, that's a great place to start um, for presence on heavy guitars. Uh, or any guitar, really, but especially like big rock guitars. Um, Olusola asks, Olusola asks, hey Ken, how do I achieve a tight mix? Uh, really short or no reverbs. Um, same with delays. You don't want a lot of spilly effects and stuff if you want a really tight, focused mix. Um, uh, even to the effect that you might want to gate some of your 
drums or something like that to shorten them, uh, that you know, that depends on feel. You just got to make sure it feels the way you want it to feel. But if you're going for like a real tight, um, punchy mix, you want to make sure your drums are punchy and not spread out. Uh, um, uh, yeah, that probably gives you some good ideas. Uh, Hans Tegan uh, says, uh, hey, Ken, I just want to say what an, oh, thank you. Uh, hey, Ken, I just want to say what an incredible resource you are and how great it is of you to share a mixing night like this. Hans, thank you very much. Um, you guys are the reason I do it. Uh, you know, um, we keep coming back because you keep coming back. And uh, we absolutely love the show and we have a absolute blast doing it. So keep joining us for Mixing Night and we will keep putting on the absolute best show that we can. I didn't get to eight or nine pro tips tonight. I'm going to spill them into the next show. I'm really sorry to all of the high level pros that I insisted get them to me. <laughs> what do you do? And uh, I, they will be used. And uh, everybody, thank you for tuning in to Mixing Night. Uh, congrats to our Beat Challenge winners. We are back March 1st, Wednesday, March 1st. Uh, we are back 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Uh, please join me then. All right, y'all have a good night.